start recording on time. Well, kind of on time. Well, <laughs> a proportion is two ratios which are equal to one another. So proportion means they're equal. So an example is two-fifths and eight-tenths. Well, they don't look equal, right? But what happens if I simplify... Oh my gosh, where's my mouse at, you guys? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, um, when, I simplify, um, when I simplify both sides, what happens? Oh, okay. All right, so in order to show if they're equal to each other, you should be able to simplify them. So if I go ahead and simplify 8 tenths, right, which means I'm going to divide, both of them are even, so I divide by 2. Um, so I would get 4 on top and 5 on the bottom. Look, they are not equal. So I'm just going to put a not equal sign, a, not a not equal sign, a slash through the equal sign, which means not equal to. So this is not, this is an example of not a, pro, I'm not going to spell out proportion. I'm just going to put prop there. So if that was an example of a not a proportion. Is that okay that we did a not example? Of course it's okay. Oh, Jonathan's here. Um, so we did not an example. So if it's a proportion, they have to be equal to each other. Um, if it is a proportion, then they would, once they're simplified, they would be equal, totally equal to each other. So if we look at the next one, 400 calories per one burger, oh, Lord have mercy. Um, and then I simplify the 1,200 calories over three burgers. If I simplify that, it should equal each other if it's a proportion. So three... Um, they're both divisible by 3. 1,200 divided by 3 is 400. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is a proportion. Is a proportion. Beautiful. Okay. And then the last one. Um, oh, my lanta. Let's see. I think I can divide the last fraction by 11. So that should be 4 fifths. And then the first one I'm going to divide by 4. So this should also be 4 fifths. So this is a proportion either. Also is a proportion. So 2 out of 3 are proportions. And the example of not a proportion is if I simplify them, they don't equal each other. Not a proportion. Does that make sense? Okay. And proportions are always written in fraction form. Okay, so there's two different ways to check if it's a proportion or not. One is what we just did. It's called simplifying both. So I'm going to take both fractions, simplify them, see if they are equal to each other. Okay, um, and then the, we just kind of did the math out already on the method one. Method two is called pro cross products. Pretty easy. I cross multiply, right? If they equal each other, then it's a proportion. If they don't equal each other, it's not a proportion. So if you don't like simplifying or you have problems simplifying, all you have to do is cross multiply. Okay? Pretty easy calculator, cross multiply them. If the totals equal each other like this one, 16 times 50 and 40 times 20, they both equal 800, so therefore it is a proportion. That's a really quick and easy, nice, easy way to, to tell. Okay? So we're going to practice a little bit. Um, to tell if it's a proportion or not. So we have some problems down here. Determine whether each pair of ratios form a proportion, then insert an equal or not equal to sign be between the pairs of, ra uh, pairs of ratios. Woo! So I'm going to zoom in. We'll just do kind of two at a time. Is that okay? Yeah. So I can do either method. It doesn't matter. And I kind of like the... Um, well, it doesn't matter. So we'll just kind of go back and forth between simplifying and um, cross-multiplying so you guys can see both of them. Is that okay? You want the notes? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and simplify the fractions um, first because, you know, why not do the first method first? So what goes into both 4 and 28? Two. Did you say 6? <laughs> 4 goes into 4 and 28, but 2 works also. So I can go slow, and I can start with 2, right? So we'll go, we'll go there too. So 2 goes into 4 um, two times. Oh, wow. And 2 goes into 28 um, 14 times. Now I can still simplify because they're still both even, right? Yeah. So I can divide by 2 again. So 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 14 seven times. Oh, sorry. 
do I need to go a little bigger? Yeah, so 214. So that, that, this one simplifies to 1 7th. Now I'm going to take the 8 56 and what goes into 8 and 56? Yes, 8 and 56. Huh? I can divide by 8 on both of them. So 8 goes into 8 one time, and 8 goes into 56 seven times. So since they simplify to the same fraction, that means this is, they are equal. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's the simplification method. Simplification method. Oh, I like that word. Okay, and then number two, um, number two, we're going to do cross multiplication because, you know, why not? Um, and that's pretty easy, right? So uh, that's just, that means I'm going to take 16 times 10, and then I'm going to take 40 times 6. Well, what's 16 times 10? 160. 160. And what's 40 times 6? 4 times 6 is 24. So that's 240. Well, those are not equal. You can choose whichever method you like, which one's faster. I kind of like the cross multiplication because, right, you're just multiplying, that's it, multiplying two numbers together. If they're not the same, then boom. But if you like to simplify, great, simplify. Because you have to learn how to simplify anyways if you don't know how to do it already. Okay, so let's do two more. And um, uh, now we have some decimals thrown in here. Oh, huh, do you need me to go back? I'm so sorry. So all you have to do is tell me and I'll go right back. Okay, so the next one has decimals in it. Definitely going to use multiplication with decimals, right? Because simplifying with decimals is even harder. So it's just easier to do the multiplication. So I'm going to do 4 times 2.5, and I'm going to do 5 times 1.6. So I'm going to pull out my calculator here because 4 times 2.5 is 10. And 1.6 times 5 is 8. So those are not equal. Questions? At home? Everyone okay at home? Okay, and then the last one. Am I good to go? Am I okay? Okay. The last one, I think I'm going to simplify this one just because I haven't done it in, since the beginning. So 50 over 60 is really easy to simplify, by the way, you guys, right? Cross off the zeros. It simplifies to 5 over 6. Done. Okay, if I have zeros at the end, I can just cross them off. And then I've got um, 35 over 42. Um, I think 7 goes into both of them. So 7 goes into 35. I'm just going to divide by 7, divide by 7. So that's going to be 5 over 6. So, yeah, those ones are equal to each other. Okay? So you're going to choose which one you like to do. There's four problems up here. Um, so go ahead and go ahead and uh, let me make those big enough so you guys can all see them here. There's five of them, four problems for you guys. So I just did the cross multiplication on all of these because, you know, I just thought it was a little easier. I'm not going to lie. Right, so um, this was 48 and 48. So two times 24 is 48 and six times eight is 48. So this one happened to be equal, okay? And then part B was uh, 72 and 90. So that one is not equal. And then C was, whew, C was pretty big. C was a... Uh, 1,050 and 1,050, so that was also equal. And then D, when I multiplied them out, I got 9. 1 1.8 times 5 is 9, and 7.5 times 1.2 is, gosh, 9. So that was also equal. Did you put it in your calculator and get the wrong answer? So, right, I'm going to take 1.8 times 5 and 7.5 times.
times 1.2. Yeah, so make sure you put your decimals in. They both equal 9. You can, you can double check again. I'll double check too, just to make sure. 9, yep. Oh, that's entirely possible. Or you went to hit it and it didn't quite clutch. Yeah. yeah, I do that all the time too. So, okay, good job. So not too bad, right, to show if they're, if they're a proportion. So then we're going to go to, uh, now we're going to talk about solving them. So what happens if one of those numbers is missing, right? So proportions can be used to solve all kinds of problems. And uh, for example, solve for S. Oh my gosh, that probably should say X in each proportion below. Um, okay, so there's a typo. Solve for X. Um, and there's a couple different methods uh, that people look at. Um, there's one that works all the time. The first two work, yeah, you know, depending on what the proportion is. So there's a side to side method, which if I look at this, um, um, how do I get from three to six? What do I do to three to get six? Multiply I multiply by two, right? So that means to get from five to this number, guess what I'm gonna do? So X is gonna equal 10. Yeah, that's it right? So if I go to number four, is it okay if I just skip to number four and we do the same thing? Yeah. What do I do to nine to get to 45? What? No, I'm going from nine to 45. What do I do to nine to get 45? Um, Multiply by five. Good. So that means I'm going to take seven and I'm going to, yeah, good. X equals 35. So that's a side by side. If the relationship is that way, I can do that, right? Yeah. And then there's an up and down relationship that I can do also. So this is the next one. So if, if my fraction, how do I get from 2 to 12? Multiply by 6. Multiply by six. Good. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to multiply by 6. So what does x equal? Forty-two, good. Yep, you can always use a calculator. I don't care, right? What do I do for to get from six to eighteen? Uh, multiply, by by three. multiply by three, good. And so fifteen times three is going to be forty-five. 45. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. So the rule for this, there's a little rule here. Remember the arrow always points, um, oh my gosh, I totally forgot what it was. Points towards the variable, I think is what it's going to say. Points towards the variable. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it too. Points towards the variable, okay? So, right, um, so for the side-to-side -side method and the up-and-down method, I always want to make sure my arrows are going towards the variable, right? Okay. So now what happens if there's no relationship between anything? So if that's where this one comes in. Look, I can't do anything to 8 to get to 20, and I can't do anything to 15 to get to 20. So I can't do anything that way, right? So how do I do that, that problem? Well, just like I pr proved if they were equal or not, I cross-multiplied. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cross, cross multiply. So I'm going to take x times 20, and I'm going to get 20x. Okay? x times 20 is 20x. And then I'm going to take 15 times 8. That's 4, 430 should be 120, I think. Yes. 120. And then what am I going to do to solve for x? Divide by 20, right? So x should equal 6. And there's my answer. Yep, so basically I'm going to cross, multiply, and then divide. Every single time. Okay? Yeah. So on this, last, on this last one, I'm going to do the same thing, right? 4 times d is... 4D, and 26 times 10 is 
260. And then I'm going to do what? Divide by 4. Beautiful. I hope it goes in there evenly. 65. Equals 65. Beautiful, Ketlin. Nice job. Okay. Well, they're all Yeah. So, but you can do, you can do the other ones like this, the same as this cross multiplication. So you can do all of the problems with cross multiplication. You don't have to memorize different methods. You can just choose the cross multiplication and do every single one that way. Cross multiplication. Right? So you don't have to remember any of the other rules. You can just cross There's multiply just and divide. Yeah, there's just three different ways. But you can solve every single proportion this way. It doesn't matter. Because watch, I'll go back and do this uh, number two. Watch, I can do two times x is 2x and 12 times 7. Oh my gosh, I should have chosen easier. What's 12 times 7? 84? Yeah. 84 divided by 2, x equals 42. Right? So it doesn't matter. I can always cross multiply and divide. So you can choose that way to do it every single time. But for some people that want to say, oh, well, this one was pretty, those two methods were pretty easy. So if I can see those, I can do it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So there's um, nine problems for you guys to do really quick. So if you can solve those nine problems for me, I'm going to put them big so you guys can see them in here if you need to. Tell me what X is or whatever variable happens to be. I think they're all X's. I tried to make them all X's. Um, so is it okay if I just give you the answers and then if you need me to go over one of them, let me know and I will, um, I'll go over those ones. Is that okay? So for A, X equals 8. For B, X equals 15. For C, X equals 9. Wait. Do you need me to do that one? I got one wrong. Could you do that one? See? Sure. Okay, so cross multiply, right? I got 21x equals, oh, sorry, I have to figure out what 7 times. 27 times 7 equals 189. Mm -hmm. Divide by 21, and x equals 9. What did you do wrong? No, it's because I did it uh, side, uh, side to side method. Oh, there's no, oh, uh, so times three, right? Yeah. So basically, but I, I'm going this way, so I'm not timesing by three, I'm dividing by three, right? To get from 21 to seven, what do I do? I divide by three. Oh. So remember, I'm going in the direction of the arrow, so t 27 divided by three would be nine. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, D would be X equals 8. E would be X equals 36. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, F is X equals 7. G is X equals 15. H is X equals 12. And I is... X, oh, I don't know why I put an I there. I'm so sorry. Um, X equals nine. So do you want me to do that one too? Right? Cross multiply, it'd be 4X equals 36 divided by 4. X equals nine. Did someone say three on that one? Okay. Questions? Are we good? Awesome. So I'm going to stop recording for a moment. Un momento.